Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Stuff I Heard podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Peak. Um, we are cruising right through August, and uh, I had the opportunity yesterday to go to Polly's Island, uh, South Carolina, to the Strand, South Strand Jeep and Dodge Ram facility for a Jeep promotion with the Carolina Jeep Meets group. A friend of mine, uh, Danny Shaw, has a big, you know, Tonka-like style Jeep that, you know, is meant to go over boulders and stuff like that. And I've been going to him, going with him on Jeep events, and I got another Jeep event coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to that and I'm possibly going to podcast from there and do a live podcast. That may be something fun to do um, or maybe just a live YouTube. I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure how I'm figuring it out yet with details, but I figure it could be fun either way. So, um, it was a good event. Um, we had about uh, four or five Jeeps from Florence in a row, maybe more, maybe six. Anyway, um, we were in a row caravanning from Florence to Polly's Island, which is about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes drive. We got down there. And they were setting up on the side where the used cars are. They had kind of cleared off an area for us to park. Um, pretty soon there was quite a few Jeeps. I want to say about 50 Jeeps in total um, coming and going. And some people stayed longer. Some people stayed for a little while. Some people that are just there for the morning. Some came for the afternoon. Um, the place there, I was, I was asking somebody else, what is the benefit to them? to hosting something like this because it's not like you're coming in there to buy Jeeps, but maybe it just draws attention. Maybe it's just a promotional to get people to go, Hey, these play, this place sells Jeeps. Look at all the Jeeps. Man, we need to stop in there and take a look. It's not a terrible idea. It didn't really cost them a lot of money. I think they had a gift card for like giveaway stuff. They had like a Visa gift card and a Cracker Barrel gift card and like some door prizes, gift cards. But the clever thing is, is when they sign you up, for these promotionals, they have you sign up with your name, your phone number, and your email address. Now, that's the key. They get your email address. So now they can send you promotionals on whenever they have specials going on. And they already know that you're into Jeeps. So, hey, here we have these new Jeeps coming along. Here's some information. Information is the key, right? And I heard some people talking about, oh, I gave them my, my old so-and-so address on my email. That way I won't get spam mail. And that's not a terrible idea. I mean, we do live in an age where it's almost like you need to readily give away um, some BS email just so that all the, the junk mail goes to that. Um, it's not always the case, but, you know, it's it's getting to where that needs to be a thing. Um, there almost needs to be a service that just naturally takes out all the junk mail. And I know that, like, I have Gmail and I have Yahoo and I noticed that there are times where a lot of mail goes through those and it has like a filter that says, yeah, this is possibly junk and we're just going to put it to the side. And that's great for most things, but you still get some stuff that comes through that's like, hey, we have this new drug trial. Would you like to sign up? And I'm like, why is pharmaceutical companies contacting me? I am not sick. I don't have my, I have not submitted my information to anybody about pharmaceutical stuff. Why are you sending me information? Or here's a new money-making opportunity for you in your area. I'm like, why? How do you know what area I'm in? You're just giving me some random stuff through an email? And, you know, I know that's all done by computers and bots, and they're just trying to get any type of traction whatsoever to get sales. Um, Whatever. It is what it is. But back to the event. The event was great. Uh, there was a food vendor there. I asked somebody out there, I said, do you think he had to pay to be here or do you think they paid him or do you think it was just like, hey, I've got a friend who's got a food truck and he could come out here and just park and possibly sell some hamburgers and hot dogs and stuff. And I don't know, maybe that's the case. Um, so, yeah, it was a nice little deal. They had an ice cream truck that pulled up and was serving ice cream as well. Selling ice cream, not serving. You know what I mean? But. It was a nice day. It wasn't too hot. Um, it was a nice breeze blowing. It got to be about 82 degrees. And um, I think everybody had a great time. I got to meet some new folks. I got to 
talked to some older folks um, that I've been meeting at these Jeep events more and more. And uh, it was pretty fun. I had a good time. Um, I am getting the itch to have a Jeep. Um, I don't know when that's going to be. Money is not exactly uh, falling off trees right now. So uh, it is it is a uh, exercise in patience and trying to make the right decision at the right time. And I'm in no hurry. So in the meanwhile, it's sort of one of those things where it's almost better to just have a friend with a Jeep that you can go along with. And I got Danny. So thanks, Danny, for letting me tag along. It's been, it's been a fun experience to do this stuff with you. Um, so let's talk about stuff I heard because this is the Stuff I Heard podcast. Uh, I listened to Dan Cummins, uh, Time Suck podcast. Uh, he did a special on the Crocodile Hunter. Crikey. Uh, remember that guy? The khaki outfit. He would always look at the dangerous poisonous snakes or the crocodiles and go, he looks angry. Let's take a look. <laughs> Let's get a closer look. He always, he always wanted the camera to get a closer look. Um, the podcast about him was very interesting. Um, he was a, an amazing guy. Uh, grew up on a wildlife reserve, thanks to his father and his mother being into wildlife, his father especially, um, and at an early age, learned to tame crocodiles and relocate crocodiles in a way that had never been done before. Um, they sort of revolutionized how crocodiles were captured and relocated. And because of their services, they were sought out, and he basically had to learn at an early age due to helping his father and his interest in helping his father on uh, the best way to trap a crocodile and, you know, move them safely without harming the crocodile. That was a big thing. They didn't want to harm the animal. They were like, it's not the animal's fault that people moved in here. This is where they live. We have to figure out how to have them live somewhere else and it not be due to our involvement as much, if that makes any sense. So, anywho, uh, great podcast. Dan and his team does a lot of research. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the very next episode was uh, back to a um, sort of nasty story. Um, you know, it's always, uh, he'll do some light stuff and then he'll do some stuff about serial killers and the things you learn about these people. It's like, holy crap, I can't believe these people exist. Um, but listen, let me tell you, when you're driving, uh, it'll keep you wide awake if you're sleepy. So I spent this past week uh, working third shift, uh, shuttling doubles trailers, and um, it was a good opportunity for me to listen to podcasts and get caught up on some things uh, that I'd missed. So that was that was a good time spent. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about technology and about podcasting and about the fact that a guy I was in the Marine Corps with, uh, Garth Blair, had turned me on to podcast years ago and it basically saved my life um i was driving a lot um and was sleepy a lot and he sent me a link to a podcast one day it just happened to be joe rogan interviewing burt kreischer on one of the first times he'd ever been on there and he was telling these amazing stories about things that he'd done um in his youth and immediately i was not only awake and alive uh, with my mind just running and racing along with his story because he's a great storyteller. But I couldn't get over how funny these guys were together. And then when I found out that they had different podcasts, I started listening to more of those, and it just grew from there. Um, but if it wasn't for these podcasts, it, it you know, I was I was in a bad place. I was um, I was struggling to stay awake. I was struggling to. Um, differentiate my awake life from my sleep life because I was so sleep deprived. There was a time and place, ladies and gentlemen, where the federal government really didn't care how much you worked uh, or drove. Even though they said they had regulations, no one checked up on it. No one cared. And, um, you know, through tragedy, change happened through the famous wreck where a Walmart truck hit Tracy Morgan and his friends and several of them died and Tracy Morgan almost died. But him being a big celebrity, it was all talked about. And Obama was president. And a lot of people liked Tracy Morgan. And they were like, hey, what's the circumstances here? And they found out that the 
that the driver of the Walmart truck was faking his logs and was way over his limit and was asleep at the wheel. And they were like, well, how often is this happening? And the more investigating they did, the more they realized, oh, there's there's very loose regulation involving our truckers on the road. And a lot of them are asleep at the wheel. And that was my case. I was asleep at the wheel for a very long time. Um, there were a lot of days where I would pull the ear brakes at my first stop or at a rest stop. And my first thought would be, how did I get here? Because I had no memory of waking up. I had no memory of going to work. I had no memory of doing anything. I was asleep at the wheel. Um, you know, I, I really I credit that time to um, just God and prayers keeping me straight and not having me injure myself or someone else during that time. That was a very dangerous time. My family used to say to me all the time, you need to get more rest. And I was like, yeah, I try, but the side of the road keeps making that noise. And they were like, that's not funny. I was like, I'm fully aware it's not funny. It's just a reality. Um, but I did that for years. Years and years and years and years and years. And, you know, I am, <clears throat> I have been with this company now for 15 years. And, um, you know, like in anything in business, change is always happening. You're not sure of the change that you're supposed to make in that process because sometimes it isn't clearly laid out for you. Sometimes the changes that you think you need to make aren't what you need to do. And it's hard to differentiate what it is you're supposed to do. And in a way, you sort of need advice from people that you trust. And those people could be your immediate family. It could be your closest friends. It could be someone that you respect. Um, but you need that information to sort of help you balance out your life. Correct? So I'm sort of in that boat right now. I'm, I'm in a position where there's a promotion coming up. But it, it may end up costing me something that I don't want to give up. So I sort of have to continue to talk to people about it and get their opinions and weigh the options. So there's that. I'm just thankful, again, that I have the technology and the ability and the uh, resources to access information and podcasts any time that I can because it's super helpful to keep me awake um, and it's done that for a lot of people I've talked about it on this podcast a lot and I'll continue to say the praises uh, of Burt Kreischer and Joe Rogan and these guys that that woke me up and kept me awake for all those years and every time I've met Burt I've told him thank you you've you kept me alive um and some people think that's not a big deal, uh, but it is to me. So let's talk about some stuff I've watched because I like sharing with you guys stuff that's good or stuff that's bad or stuff that's weird. And, you know, sometimes you find something you're like, oh, I never even thought about that. That's not even on my radar. Um, so I want to talk about there's a movie that came out a few years ago called Uncharted. It stars uh, Tom Holland, uh, Mark Wahlberg, and Antonio Banderas. Now, <clears throat> there was a time where Antonio Banderas was the A-list draw of the big screen. And now he's just, um, you know, a name that my generation recognizes. Uh, people my age are like, oh, look, it's Antonio Banderas. Um, he's not one of the top-listed people. He's like fifth or so on the list. Um, I do have some tabs open here. Let's see. No, I'm sorry. He's one, two, three, four, five, six. He's seventh listed in the cast. So, I mean, he's on screen about that much time. So, anyway, I saw him and I recognized him. And right away, I was like, oh, my God, it's that guy. Um, there are several actors that I recognized in this. Uh, there's a lot of people that you go, oh, I've seen them in this film or I've seen them in that thing or whatever. Um, one of the guys that stood out to me was this Pilu as, as Bach played a guy named Gage. Um, it stars Tom Holland. I should just start off there. It stars Tom Holland, Spider-Man, the Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, and Mark Wahlberg 
Everybody knows Mark Wahlberg. They're great together. This is fun. This is like a buddy film um, with adventure and a bit of Indiana Jones mixed in, you know, treasure hunt, um, funny ad-libbing and backstabbing along the way. And people are out to get them, including this other lady that's second listed, Sophia Taylor Ali. Um, I don't really know her from anything, but I saw her and I was like, wow, she's attractive. And this is a cool little story between the three of them. And you don't know who's backstabbing who because they're all sort of out for each other kind of thing. And Antonio Banderas is one of the bad guys. And you're like, ah, oh, this guy is pretty cool. Um, this Pilu as as back. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Sorry, dude. Um, I'm terrible with pronunciations is a Danish actor. Um, he's best known for he was in um, Game of Thrones. He was the guy with the eye patch that overthrew the, the the sea people. And yeah, you'll know when you see him. You're like, oh, that guy. Yeah, I know that guy. And Tom Hollander's in it. Um, he has a, a part in it. Not a big part, but you're like, oh, that's Tom Holland. Oh, cool. Um, a lot of people remember him. Um, I would say, what do people know him for? Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, he was the the general guy that was after, um, after Johnny Depp in the movies. Anywho, it's a fun movie. Um, the breakdown here of the show. Let's go back. Can I go back? How does this work? I like technology. Come on, guys. Uncharted. Okay. It says, treasure hunter Victor Sully Sullivan recruits street smart Nathan Drake to help him recover a 500-year-old fortune amassed by explorer Ferdinand Magellan. What starts off as a heist soon becomes a globe-trotting white-knuckle race to reach the prize before the ruthless Santiago Moncade Mon Mon uh, can get his hands on it. If Sully and Nate can decipher the clues and solve one of the world's oldest mysteries, they stand to find one. They stand to find five billion dollars in treasure, but only if they can learn to work together. This came out in February of this year. Oh, okay. Um, again, cool movie. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, I told my wife about it, and she was like, "Yeah, I don't care." Of course, that's her her thing. Um, but listen, if you're looking for a fun adventure kind of movie that's funny and I think it's kid friendly. Um, yeah, it was it was fun. It's on uh, Netflix right now, so check it out. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Okay. Um, the Sophia Ann Taylor lady. Um, she apparently was on Grey's Anatomy and The Wilds. I don't really remember her from The Wilds, I, but it's been a while since I've watched it. Um, there is a lady though, uh, Tati Gabrielle. Uh, I've seen her in lots of stuff, including. Uh, Sabrina and the Teenage Witch and the 100 and um, there was some other show that I watched that she was one of the main character or one of the not a main character but she was in the anyway she's a great actress um, very talented um, but yeah she's one of the bad guys in this as well and she's one of those people that when she's on the screen you can't take her eyes off you, know, you can't take your eyes off of her so pretty cool um, I recommend checking that out Okay, so then I watched um, this show called The Sandman. It's a new show that's on Netflix right now, and it's it's weird, okay? I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It's weird. It's very weird. It is the idea that, okay, so the premise of the show, let's go back here. Let's hit the little back arrow on my, on my button. Apparently, I Googled a lot of these people. Okay. So the Sandman came out on Netflix. It is uh, when the Sandman, a.k.a. Dream, they call him Dream, um, the cosmic being who controls all dreams, is captured and held prisoner for more than a century. He must journey across different worlds and timelines to fix his chaos <clears throat> that his absence has caused. Okay. It looked interesting with the previews. Um, I didn't watch it when it first came out over the weekend, but I did watch it during the week. And apparently a lot of people watched it. And uh, I was like, all right, so I'll, I'll check this out. Each episode is sort of like a different chapter of a book that doesn't continue a story. 
it's it is a continuance of a story, but each one sort of goes deep into um, a journey, if you will. So, like <clears throat> one of the episodes is pretty cool, where um, he hangs out with the entity that is death, and he walks around with death while death collects people, and and death talks to him about the idea of um, what it means to experience life and what it is to do the job of death because he's trying to come to grips with the fact that he is dream he is the person who's involved with giving people dreams and the responsibility of it and he calls himself the endless and it's it's very <clears throat> the whole thing is very poetic in a way because it reminds me of reading um shakespeare as a kid or faust um it's a very interesting idea of you know, what if the entities of our um, functions, we'll call it functions, were actual people with thoughts and feelings and emotions and desires. And you do meet a character that plays the character of desire. You meet a character that plays death. You meet a character that plays Lucifer. Um, you meet um, depression. You meet uh, destiny. I mean, you meet all these characters and they sort of interact with each other and they call each other brother and sister and it's very weird and very cool in a way. Um, there's an episode where you're following along a character who um, goes to a convention and they call it a serial convention. And it doesn't take long to figure out that it's a convention of serial killers, not serial, but serial killers. And they talk about their their occupation as collecting. And because Dream has been absent all these years, these other entities that are his siblings supposedly have taken over and they're running amok because they're going unchecked. Dream apparently was the person who kept everything in check and kept everybody in check. And without him there, there's a character there called the Corinth. Corinthian. Because of Corinthian. And he's sort of a bad guy. He's... He, Whereas he shades and you find out pretty quickly that he scoops people's eyeballs out and he puts their eyeballs in his head so that he can experience their life as a human in a way, you know, eyes of the window to the soul, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty, that, that, that part of it's pretty gross. Um, but again, the story, the writing is, is, is pretty fascinating. Um, I wanted to, as I'm watching it, I wanted to, sort of poo poo it. And I was like, I don't I don't like it. And then as I kept watching it, I kept thinking, actually this is this is pretty smart. This is actually really well done. Um there's an exceptional episode where um Dream has to go to hell and and battle Lucifer in a way. And when Lucifer pops on the screen, you think, oh, it's going to be some big dude. It's not. It's a woman. And it sounds like Helen Mirren at first. And you're like, wait, that's not Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren's short. This lady's huge. And I was like, wait, who is this? And I had to Google it. Okay. It's it's Gwendolyn Christie. She's the lady who plays uh, Brienne of Tarth. Um, she's also in... The Star Wars First Order as the Stormtrooper Captain Phasma. She is six foot three. <clears throat> and she she personifies, you know, verbally and visually what Helen Mirren looked like to me a few years ago. Um, but it's not. It's her. And it's she's i don't know i'm impressed um i'm impressed at the lineup of actors that signed up for this Patton oswald is in it you know the guy that did the voice of ratatouille um he's a comedian really good comedian um <laughs> but he's in this and he's the voice of a crow named matthew who just happens to help out dream um there's a lot of people in this that when you see them on the screen you're like wait I've seen them in all kinds of stuff and you want to Google them and you want to be like, Oh my God, that's that person. Like the, the lady who's, you know, supposed to be second cast in this, um, Jean, Gina Coleman. 
She apparently was in Doctor Who. Uh, the main guy. I don't know him from anything. Um, I really don't know him from anything. I had to Google him. And again, he's a British actor. Uh, he was in Being Julia, Like Minds, and The Boat That Rocked. No idea what those are. I think I watched Being Julia. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't know who he is. Pretty good in this. But he just has, sort of has to be creepy and speak slowly. Um, and deliver the lines like a like a British actor can. <laughs> but you're going to see a lot of people in this. You go, oh, I know them. Uh, Charles Dance, Stephen Fry. Uh, Mark Hamill is the voice of Pumpkinhead. There's a Pumpkinhead character, an animated sort of character. Um with a giant pumpkin head and an animated mouth. And it's Mark Hamill's voice. He's a great voice actor. Man, I really dig it. Um, Cain and Abel are in this. They, they they have a thing together. One of the guys, right away when you see him, you're going, I've seen him in all kinds of stuff. Um, Yeah, on and on and on. I mean, I'm just scrolling through the, the faces of these people, and I'm going, I've seen them in all sorts of things. Um, Yeah. Amazing. Just amazing cast. And it's really interesting because, I mean, yes, we are entering into a time where the writing is getting very competitive with all of the streaming services because you have, you know, not only Netflix, but Hulu and Amazon and Apple TV and regular TV and, you know, so on and so forth. And everybody's trying to make their own content and they're trying to be viable on their own. And in there, um, you have actors also trying to get roles just to pay the bills. I mean, and you keep thinking that you're in the Breaking Bad scenario of if this is a hit, this could be my thing that catapults me to be a superstar. I mean, we saw that with Aaron Paul and and um, Brian Cranston. I mean, it catapulted them to superstardom. Um, but they took on a role that they thought, well, this isn't going to pay much, but I really believe in the writing and I believe in the project. And that's just it, is you've got to have passion for the thing that you're doing in order to succeed, right? So maybe that's the age we live in now. Maybe that's sort of the risk that everyone feels like they're taking all the time of, you know, this could be the thing that, that does it for me. Um, This story, though, The Sandman, I don't think this is that story. I think this is a story that a lot of people probably read the premise of and went, oh, I want to be a part of it. Just because of the staff, I mean, the, the cast that I'm looking at. It has to be one of those projects that everybody read and was like, I don't care what I'm doing. I want to be a part of it because it, it is cool. Um, again, I wanted to poo-poo on it as I started watching it because I was thinking, this is just so slow. There's nothing happening. And then things happened and you're like, okay, okay, okay. I see what they're doing. Okay, okay. It's pretty, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, oh, that's cool. That's cool too. I like that part. Yeah, that's Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. And it is cool. So anyway. If you like weird, if you like existential stuff, uh, if you like uh, seeing a cast of killers, um, this is pretty good. It's a very weird story, though. Don't expect it to be all peachy and sunny. There is an episode where this guy goes to a diner and he has everyone fulfill all of their wildest fantasies, which includes uh, sex and murder and and grotesque mutilation and stuff like that. And it's pretty nasty. Um, but there are some interesting episodes with, um, you know, God, I can't even, I don't want to describe it because I don't want to ruin it, but like the, there's an episode where he has a deal with death where they meet someone in like the 1300s and he talks to this guy who made a comment that he wants to live forever. And he, these entities overhear it, death and dream overhear this. And they say, okay, how about this? How about you can't die and we'll meet here in a hundred years and we'll talk about what you've learned. And it, it and then a hundred years turns into 200 years, turns into 300 years. And it gets, it gets very interesting. I think that was my favorite episode. Yeah. So anyway, um, all right. Let's take it a little bit lighter, shall we? I Am Groot. <laughs> I Am Groot is a, a little mini series that's on Disney Plus. Um, again, voiced by Vin Diesel, which is weird. I don't know how they do that. 
they have to speed up his voice or something so that it's got him this cute little thing. It's Groot in a pot to start with, and then he gets legs, and then he's he's just little, okay? So the premise of this, they're only five-minute episodes or six-minute episodes, and there's only five of them. Uh, the premise says, the mischievous toddler baby Groot learns how to grow up amongst trouble in the stars, along with the help of his friends and family in the ragtag superhero team of the Guardians of the Galaxy. It just came out. It's cute. My wife watched them. She's like, oh, this is cute. It is cute. So I am Groot. Cute. Um, now, Lock and Key. Lock and Key is on Netflix. Lock and Key has been a very interesting show. Um, I don't know how to describe it if no one's ever seen it. That's the key, is I don't know how really to describe it. If I read their premise, it just says on the premise here, following their father's murder, three siblings move into a house filled with reality-bending keys from the comics by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. Now, you're asking, who's Joe Hill? Oh, well, that's Stephen King's son. <laughs> so there you go, Stephen King's son. Um, great cast, great acting. Uh, crazy story. Lock and Key is only out for three seasons. Um, I'm not sure why they just had it to three seasons, but I think it was perfect for three seasons because you got into the story enough for it to be dangerous and crazy and wild and pulled out just in time before you started doing crazy episodes like The Flash is doing where they go back in time and they change realities and still like stuff like that. So anyway, um, this is the second half of the last season they did it in a two-part series which is what a lot of people are doing um i thought it ended well i thought the writing was great um some of the stuff is a little hokey but it was cute and it's just dangerous enough that if you had a a teenager or preteen or whatever i think as a family you could watch this together and sort of talk about it and it's just dangerous enough to keep them entertained, but not so dangerous that you're like, I don't think I should watch this. Um, probably 12 and up, I would say, for the show. If you're ever going to like put a rating on anything, I would say this show is a, a PG-13 show. Um, so there is some danger in it. There's some demons. There's some battling dangerous looking things and such and some scary moments. It's suspenseful, um, but not overly grotesque. Uh, yeah. So anyway, lock and key. Pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, now, back to Lighthearted. We watched a movie called Luck. Luck came on um, Apple TV. And somehow we got Apple TV with the purchase of our phones or whatever. But um, it's a cute little cartoon movie. This lady... The premise of the show. Let's read this here. Okay. The story of Sam Greenfield, the unluckiest person in the world, suddenly finds herself in the never before land of luck. Never before seen land of luck. She must unite with the magical creatures there to turn her luck around. And it just so happens that the thing that she becomes buddies with is a cat who's extremely lucky, voiced by Simon Pegg. <laughs> uh Jane Fonda is a voice in this. Um yeah. It John Rattensenberger's got a voice in this. It's cute. It's a cute little movie. It's fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. There's nothing to poo-poo about it. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It basically talks about how <clears throat> good luck and bad luck sort of need each other to be in balance. And sometimes if you're if you have bad luck. The biggest thing that you learn from it is to learn to pivot and find a different way for things to happen. It makes you very resilient when things happen that some people call bad luck. So it was fun. Check that out. All right. Let's see. I think that's all my tabs open. Yeah, that's all my tabs. So anywho, I hope that helps you. I hope you find some stuff that you enjoy watching. I hope it, uh, helps pass the time, uh, much like my friend uh, Garth gave me the podcast information years ago. 
sort of my effort along the way of this podcast is to give you guys some stuff to help you along the way. Maybe it's some stuff to entertain you or pass the time or, or just to, you know, sit down with your family and watch together or by yourself. I don't care. Whatever. Whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you going. So, anywho. Um, thank you to everybody who listens. Thank you to everybody who subscribes. I appreciate it. Um, I'm still watching Itty Boots on YouTube, and uh, she's up and running through Colorado right now. Pretty fun. I'm also watching Matt's Off-Road Recovery. They're going to be at the Jeep Invasion um, in later August. And, uh, yeah, more bear don't care. I'm digging it. <laughs> All right. So y'all take care. Thanks for listening. And as always, cue the cow. So I want you guys to give me more likes. Give me more likes.